Good morning, church. This is the second Sunday in the church season of Pentecost. This is June the 6th, 2021, and this is our Savior Lutheran Church in Jamaica, Queens, New York City. Welcome to each and every one of you. If you're here in the United States, we hope that you had a wonderful and a solemn Memorial Day holiday last weekend as we remember those who have given their lives for our freedoms. And we also, with Memorial Day, kick off the summer season for 2021. But for your continued safety, I need to say that worship in the church building remains suspended for a while longer until more folks can get the vaccine, especially younger folks. Also, a reminder that Open Church Night is the first and the third Wednesday of every month. Come, sit in the church, come pray, come chant, receive communion, just come. It grows a little, a little bit each time, and that's the first and the third Wednesday of every month. Now, I have absolutely no other announcements today, so let us enter into worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, with a word, you created all things. When we turned our backs on you, you still loved us. In Christ, you turned death into life and defeat into victory. As we enter into worship this day, may we thank you with our praises this day. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Now, my friends, let's sing our way into worship with the praise song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to
open the eyes of my heart. Holy, 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 you are holy, holy, holy. Good morning, church. In response to charges that Jesus is possessed, today we hear Mark's gospel share Jesus telling us that those who do the will of God are possessed by the Holy Spirit. Here is our lesson from the third chapter of Mark. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he, was, he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, your mother and brothers are, looking, are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends this morning's gospel lesson. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the midst of the Me Too movement, I tell you today a Bible story about a man who got caught with his pants up. A game of hide and seek was being played out in Eden's garden. The home of Adam and Eve had become their hiding place. And God came a-looking, looking for what was the very best of God's creation, the top of God's line. But where was Adam? Where was Eve? They were hiding, hiding from God. And since God was it, the Creator searched and searched for the beloved creation. Adam, where are you? I suspect that question dripped with compassion more than Adam, an anger. Adam, where are you? Because it was the compassion in God's voice, I suspect, that Adam was prompted to come out of hiding. God, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God, all good Jews know that it is an abomination to present themselves before the Lord naked. I didn't want to break the rules. 
I didn't want to disobey your laws. I didn't want to be disrespectful towards you and your ways. Sounds good, Adam, but you just can't fool the Almighty. Cutting to the chase, God asks two pointed questions. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Adam had disrespected God. Adam had disobeyed the Lord. But appearing before the almighty O Naturel had little to do with that. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Of course he had. He knew it. God knew it. And God knew Adam knew it. Have you eaten from the tree? It was a simple yes or no question, but look at what Adam does with his answer. The woman, yes, the woman you gave me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Adam takes no responsibility for his own sinfulness. Instead, he tries to cover his embarrassingly bare backside by blaming Eve. Don't fail to see, though, whom he ultimately blames. The woman you gave me, God, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. So begins the, the blame game, pointing up fractured interpersonal relations and a broken relationship with God. Paradise lost. A world that is fallen. Adam is the Hebrew word for man. So it is that his story is our story. Like him, we have disobeyed the Lord. Like him, we have disrespected God's ways, thinking we knew better or not really thinking at all. Like him, we have severed relationships with others and with God. We have not loved God as we should have. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. That is our sin. Scripture tells us of another better way to go than to play the blame game. We can come out, come out from wherever we are. No need for us to hide from God. No need to try to justify ourselves by casting blame for our own sins on others. Like the psalmist, we can ask this question of God. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? And like the psalmist, we should always know that there is forgiveness with God. We can, therefore, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. That great power to redeem was reveal, revealed on, on Calvary's cross by, by the one who said in the gospel lesson for this day, truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. That steadfast love of God was made manifest by a second Adam, whose death and resurrection guarantees our eternal life with God. In Christ shall all be made alive. Even in the garden, after the fall, there were glimpses of God's mercy and love. Rewind back to the part where God gives the command and reminds Adam 
what the outcome of his sinfulness would be. God said, you may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden except the tree that gives knowledge and of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. Yet Adam and Eve, they didn't die. At least not the same day, they sinned. And that's mercy. God withholding deserved punishment. And then there's this. After all the talk of nakedness, we find God making clothes out of animal skins for Adam and his wife. In my mind's eye, I picture the Almighty sitting at a cosmic Singer sewing machine, stitching and bobbing so that sinful creatures would be warm and well. Such is God's love for Adam and Eve. And that love now comes to us, sinners that we are, as God forgives us our every trespass and clothes us with the righteousness of his only Son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor O'Rourke, for your words this morning. We now continue with worship by singing a, a good one for this Sunday in the season of Pentecost, standing on the promises of Christ my Lord. Let's sing. of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Oh
Let us bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. At the end of each piece of the prayers, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and if you would please respond at home with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, as we come before you this day, we pray for our world. Lord, more shooting deaths this week. Please make it stop. Please open the hearts of those in power to write legislation that helps to end this violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that we have rounded the corner on defeating this deadly virus. As we celebrate the great numbers this week, may we remain vigilant. May we remain cautious as we pray for it all to end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, God of the cosmos, we pray for creation. We pray for creatures, great and small. We pray that as the climate heats up, we may be spared. May we work harder to heal this broken creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in Jesus, you bring healing to our world. Reveal to all the depths of your love. Accompany all who suffer in mind, in body, or in spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. This day we pray especially for Hannah and Janine, Eric and Colin, Shalana and Gwendolyn, Joan and Janela, Charles and Reggie, Debika and Jessica. As we pray for them, we also pray for those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we set our minds on things eternal as we worship this day, and as we await the reopening of worship, may we extend your grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, receive God's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, before we go, may you be blessed this week. Enjoy the summer of greater freedom. We'll see you all sooner than you realize. For now, we sing one more. How great thou art. Amen. Stay well, stay safe, and take care, y'all. We'll see you soon.
can seize my soul.